What's going on guys? Welcome back to another day in the garage. Um, if you guys all checked out the Honda Day video that I dropped last weekend, um, it's a pretty good time out there at New Hampshire, in New Hampshire at New England driveway. Uh, it was a lot of fun meeting Honda Pro Jason. That was really cool, kind of like a highlight of the weekend. Um, but we're back now and uh, back to working on this thing. The goal now is to get this thing running. I want this thing running very soon. There's not a whole lot left to get this thing running. So we're gonna try to knock out as much as we can today, tomorrow, and I don't know. We're just gonna really just send it, figure out what parts I need left or what parts are left to order, order whatever we need, and just really try to get this thing to the point where we can at least fire it up and make sure it runs and then we can go over everything you know and then obviously i gotta get like a windshield in it and uh you know button up everything else before we can really go to the dyno with it but if you know getting it started is our first initial step so that's where we gotta get um not sure if in the last video i had the ex I know, maybe i had the exhaust on here but anyways we got that figured out i know i said i was still trying to figure out the radiator well got that figured out um, and that's mainly what today's video is about. Um, so we come down here, you guys can see these holes. And I started working on this last weekend, but we got these two holes here drilled for the pegs on our radiator to sit in. Um, but being this weight, weight bar is hollow, um, I don't want just holes here because I don't want it filling with water rusting from the inside out etc etc so the fix for that um is going to be after talking with eric at unified racing or uh ek fab is we're going to take some brown stock steel here and i'm going to basically drill another hole down on the bottom side we're going to put a piece of tubing through weld it so that the inside of the weight bar is sealed off but we still have our our mounting holes here for our pegs on the radiator and then um we're just going to take some of these some of these black grommets that i've got just take a couple of these some holes in them and you just slide those you know right on the peg so that there's some insulation, or there's an insulator there for vibration and whatnot. So that should work for that. And then our radiator will finally be actually fully installed. Um, as you can see, I have the hoses on there and then you can get the hoses on, clamps on, that part's done. And then from there, I started doing quite a bit of it last weekend and getting the rest of this harness all run on the engine. Whatnot. We got a turbo feed line on. I put that on last weekend as well. We got that routing down under the cam gears there. And then, oh well, I can get the camera down in here. Probably not well at all, but it goes down to our sandwich plate down there. And uh, there we go. Now you can see it. So our feed line going right there to the sandwich plate behind the filter. Um, so we'll get, you know, a nice, hopefully, so unfiltered oil going to our turbo and uh camera back out of here um one other thing that i tried to do last weekend and i needed to order another fitting was we've got our our uh sensor here for oil pressure I mean, our oil pressure sensor so this will send the signal to our aem cd7 let us know what our oil pressure is this i'm just going to run right off the back of the block where the uh where the factory like oil pressure sensor would go and then we're gonna re we're supposed to remote mount these like on the firewall or something so they don't vibrate on the engine and then break um so i'm gonna mount that up on the firewall and uh yeah then we'll be able to wire that up and be able to read our oil pressure um so a lot of things going on a lot of things to do um that's kind of the gist of it i'm gonna get working on this though and get this knocked out so we get a radiator just put in here, done, 
and we can move on to all of that electrical crap and the oil sensor. Try to get all that done and really start going final steps in this thing to get this thing turnkey ready. So let's get after it. course I just get into a groove and I'm just about to like actually really get some stuff done and this happens so I suppose I got to clean that up now I didn't film all of that. I tried to time lapse as much as I could, um, but it gave like every project, nothing goes as smooth as you want it to. And it gave me some hell, so I just shut the camera off and got it done. But um, yeah, between overheating drills and uh, my step bit that went dull, so I had to go get another one. Um, Overheating drills, dead batteries, trying to get through the steel wasn't easy. I mean, it's four holes, so, you know, that's a lot of iron, um, even though it doesn't seem like it. But we got through. Um, as you can see, I got my first little chunk of pipe through there, or round stock, whatever you want to call it. And you can see it's sticking out just a little bit on the bottom, enough to, you know, weld it. I got this. Um, actually, I gotta tap this one back out because I gotta grind the port 15 off the bottom still of the weight bar. But um, as you can see, this thing will just drop down in there. And then uh, I find a, find a hole here. And then line that up. And, uh, well, yeah. Go. And then I'll be able to just tap that down. But like I said, I still gotta grab the old trusty grinder down there and uh, get the port 15 away from that hole. So I can grab the old welder and weld these things in place and slap some more port 15 on it. Before I do that, I actually think I am gonna tap this in and put the radiator back in here and just verify uh, my height and everything that's gonna make sure it's all gonna work still and then we can just go final assemble this thing.
on guys it is the next day and uh we're back out here i had to i called it quits last night um i got this done but i had to i put some uh the 415 on there and uh, i had to let that dry before i could reassemble this thing but don't mind the somewhat crappy weld i mean i didn't grind it it's not totally smooth, so I didn't grind it all the way down. I got sick of grinding and I just said screw this because my welds weren't the greatest. But, you know, I'm not a welder. I'm a freaking mechanic, so whatever. But it works. You can see down. See? You can see all the way through, but you can't see inside the weight bar. And that was the whole goal there. So, got that weld at the top bottom. We got a new 415 on there. So, now, we can go ahead and, uh, Get this thing assembled. Don't mind the rusty exhaust pipe. That's gonna go off and get ceramic coated here. Once all of this is sorted, we're gonna get that done as well. So it looks nice and keeps heat away from the radiator because once I get the radiator in here, you'll see how close they are together. I put tape on there because you know I'm always paranoid about, I don't know, grinding dust or whatever falling down. I don't know. I did it like after the fact too, so I don't even think it matters at this point, but you know. Whatever. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, actually before I put this in, I'll show you guys here. See, so I took a couple of those uh, grommets that I had and I just cut like a cross in it or whatever, an X, whatever you want to call it, and then just shoved them on there so that now it'll sit on the rubber and not just on the tank. So it'll have a little bit of dampening there. Um, should be good. I mean, it's going to kind of sit on these bungs too a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. So, I'll go ahead, get this thing in there, and then we'll take a look at it. All right, guys, it's in there. Um, I hook up my radiator hoses, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing, but you can see how close that is to the exhaust. It's not touching, which is good, but it's super, super tight. So, when I get this up pipe, ceramic coated so it keeps the heat within the pipe and not melting my friggin radiator which you know yeah hopefully that doesn't happen worst case scenario it's gonna get ceramic coated in heat wrapped or just heat wrap the bottom or something just so it keeps the heat off the radiator but it is what it is i mean this whole setup obviously you can tell there ain't a lot of room up front here so it, you know ain't no way around that so it's whatever um it's gonna work okay we're gonna make it work this car's been in here way too long. It's been 84 years. But this actually turned out better than I thought it was going to. I don't know how well this will show on the camera, but if you can see down there, none of the tank is resting on the weight bar itself. You can see the grommet there on the left. You can see the grommet here on the right. It's just enough to keep the tank off the weight bar and it's gonna be enough to dampen any vibration. So it actually worked out really, it actually turned out better than I thought it was going to. So I'm actually pretty stoked about that because I was, you know, somewhat nervous in the beginning. I'm like, I don't know how it's gonna, with me doing it, how it's gonna turn out. So, um, cause I'm no fabricator, but made it work. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know, does this thing come loose? It looks like it. I think I need to buy new uh, things to hold this fan on because ever since I pulled them off the first time, they just like don't want to stay. I have to order a new kit, I think. But yeah, I need to move the fan to the other side, obviously, because um, yeah, there ain't no room for it with the exhaust there. But I have checked already and the intercooler will fit in front of this. And I actually think I'm gonna set that back up here right now. And then, yeah, we'll just see how much room we got. All right, and I put those back up there. I mean, there's just enough room. This thing is just like chilling on the edge here. <laughs> but it fits, and uh, hard to, well, maybe if I come over here. You can see in there, I mean, you know, it's right against the fan, but it is what it is. I mean, it'll be fine. It's still on there. So we will basically just had to get this intercooler mounted. Um, which I was thinking, you know, about that round stock to use on the weight bar right here, this three quarter inch. 
pipe. I was thinking, you know, this is three quarter inch bong right here, basically. I mean, the uh, outside diameter of that bong is like three quarter inch. So I was thinking I'd just take a stick of that, come up here to the core support, and then uh, find a long enough bolt to go through and thread into here. And maybe put like a lot, you know, obviously a washer or something just to stabilize it on each side. The only thing I'm worried about is it being in the way of the clip, two clips for the bumper, but you know, where there's a well, there's a way. We're going to figure that out because I think that's, I mean, obviously it needs to be mounted. So it's probably my best bet there. Um, unless I built some kind of bracket that like, I don't know, I was going to say like tri bracket thing in jigger, but I don't know. Probably just going to do it the easiest way I can and make it work. But you have to make sure this thing gets centered. Um, another thing I noticed when I was putting the intercooler back on, another thing I had to do here, I had the 90, the uh, overflow bung, because otherwise it was going straight into the exhaust and it would just melt that hose. So I'm going to tell you right now, finding a fitting that fit into the radiator was a pain in the ass because nobody makes like 1 16th NPT fittings. So I had to get a 1 16th NPT to 3 8 NPT to a 3 8 freaking 90. It was a whole thing. And uh, I don't even know if this was big enough. This was a little bit smaller than the factory one. But I'm like, you know what? We're going to run it for now and we can change things later. Um, so I am looking for a bracket for the overflow tank. Obviously, I must have. I mean, I've got. I have the tank. I have no idea where the bracket is for the tank. Um, I think that's going to be my next thing I do today is I'm going to go through this disaster of parts and uh, see if I can find that bracket. I have a, I don't know, I just, I have a feeling I threw it away um, when I cleaned the garage out, like one of the 65 times I've gone through these parts and got rid of stuff. So I probably got rid of it, which is going to stink because I have to go buy a new one. Um, well, not a new one. I'm going to go to the junkyard and get one because it's going to be way cheaper at the junkyard than it is. Those things are like $130 brand new. Ridiculous for a freaking piece of steel. I don't know. Anyways, that's probably going to be it for this video, guys. Like, I'm probably going to keep working, but I'll probably um, figure out what I'm going to do. And it's all, it's going to be a bunch of small piddly stuff, like, you know, hooking up freaking radiator hoses and just kind of cleaning up wiring and figuring out what parts I need to order and all that jazz. So it's not going to be anything insanely awesome for you guys to sit here and watch so uh probably gonna cut the video here and if i do anything cool i will obviously record that and get you guys a new video um for next week or something like one of these days i'm gonna get that rear bumper video done that thing's been sitting here forever and i need to get that done but it's for another day so um hope you guys enjoyed this if you did hit the like button if you didn't hit the like button um Subscribe to the channel if you haven't because we're getting closer to 100 and I really want to make that number So you guys have a good freaking weekend and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace I've been dreaming not in my head like I've seen it a life worth living is a life with me and I'll do what I love till my heart stops beating. I'm feeding this demon